How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I am going to be debuting the 99 overall signature series 7th inning boss Walter Johnson and I'm also going to be getting into the set 44 headliner prediction to start off this video. So for all these headliners we've had so far they have tweeted out some clues and the last one kind of had a crypto message saying the question marks don't mean anything. Here we have four letters in the first name, seven letters in the last name. We have an award series player with a red outline for the background. And uh, previously, some of these clues don't match up. I do have a couple options though that kind of fit the clues a little bit. I honestly don't know how I've been able to predict a good amount of these headliner cards throughout the year. But honestly, I think that for a position player, we could end up getting a gold glove version of Omar Vizquel. Keep in mind, it's an award series player. I think we could also end up getting Jake Arrieta. This is kind of the player that I hope we see. I think we have a better chance to get Omar Vizquel, but uh, a nice Cy Young Arrieta in the 97 overall range would be absolutely amazing, would add to uh, a lot of the pitching options that we have already in the game. But as you can see, I purchased Walter Johnson for 204,000 stubs. I wanted to try him out. I know uh, he has some pretty decent pitches, his individual pitches, on daddy leagues look pretty good as well i kind of checked him out over there uh, that's a database that just kind of gives us more in-depth attributes on each individual pitch or at least that's kind of what i use it for but uh, this opponent has a good team he's got mvp mike trout mvp bay ruth switch hitting jose ramirez david ortiz a couple prestige players in biggio and sheffield he also has larry walker um but i, I wanted to use this walter johnson mainly because uh, I just kind of wanted to try him out, see if he was effective. Last year, this card was not good at all. He got lit up. And uh, I think that his motion is a little slow. If that's not something that you like to use, then I can completely understand that. But it can also play into your advantage as well. I think because he has that slow motion, he's kind of waving his arm around in the opposite direction from where he's throwing it with that slinging sidearm animation. I think that he can be good. He can kind of throw your opponent off a little bit in terms of their approach or just in general their timing at the plate. I know a lot of people were having a tough time with this uh, seventh inning showdown facing this Walter Johnson. I mean, they were saying that he was throwing the ball all over the place and, you know, he has that velocity. I can only imagine facing this card on Legend. I would assume he'd be pretty good and that might be the best difficulty for you to use him on. For this one, we're playing on Hall of Fame. I'm going for the championship di series division. Trying to mix in his pitches here, you know, throw in that changeup. Coming in at about 84, 85. Uh, he doesn't have the most break on that pitch. It actually is his least amount of break. Coming in at 78. But his pitches, all four pitches are in the 90s for control uh, on this base card. If Once you prestige this card, he's going to be even better. His changeup is also going to be a lot better. And originally, I thought that this card was not going to be that good, just based on uh, the way this card performed last year. And so far, he's, he's not bad. Struck out a couple guys or pitched well in that first inning. Uh, now we're manufacturing a run. We hit, let off this inning with a double, move him over with the ground ball to the shortstop. And now with the sack fly, I, I was kind of on that pitch. Just didn't really uh, square it up completely, swung under it somehow. Anyway, Walter Johnson's second inning of work. He had a really good first inning, only 11 pitches thrown. I'm still trying to mix that fastball in. I'm not going to take you through each and every uh, windup. It's That would be brutal for you to sit through uh, each time he's winding up his arm and everything. But I am kind of going through somewhat of a sequence of pitching. Uh, here, this curveball was meant to be low and in. And just below the zone, we actually threw it to the opposite side of the plate. Luckily, he rolled that over. Now we're facing Jose Ramirez. This card has a great swing, a really fast swing. So I'm trying to get him with the off speed to start off. Pitch a little backwards, set up that fastball, try and get him to be a little bit late on it. Mix in that sinker as well. Here we're going back-to-back changeups. He swings over the top. Now we're trying to uh, come up and inside with the sinker. Trying to get him frozen here. We miss the spot, and he smacks it up the middle off the pitcher. Uh, hopefully Walter Johnson isn't injured, but uh, as you can see from this clip right here, for whatever reason, we kind of just froze, and we end up losing connection. What stinks about this is the fact that with this brand new stamina update, it kind of messes up Walter Johnson's debut. I mean, 
He has 125 stamina. He has the unbreakable quirk. He threw one inning in the third, and now his energy is below halfway. I have to wait to use him after a couple more games of ranked seasons, which I honestly don't have time for. I played a few of these event games last night that I will include in this video. But uh, that stamina update really messed me up for this Walter Johnson debut. I mean, by the time I played a couple more games to get his stamina up, his price is going to go down and I'll lose out on more stubs. So my plan is to sell him and pick him up a little later to put him back in the lineup or rotation and regain that energy. So that's kind of unfortunate that it happened that way. But I, that was completely out of my control. I don't think the opponent even, you know, quit out of the game or dashboarded or rage quit, whichever term you want to use. I don't think any of that occurred. I think he just lost connection. That last opponent also had over 500 games or even 600 games of ranked seasons played and a lot of losses. So maybe he's disconnecting often and that's how he's earning his losses early in the game like that. I have no idea. It's kind of unfortunate that that's how the debut went. But it is what it is. I mean, I figured I would include almost every single pitch that I threw with him because I needed to, you know, get as much gameplay or as much clips with him as possible. Now, I figured I would just hop into the event. I played a couple of these games. I'm working on completing that uh, mission where you win 15 event games for program stars as well as uh, just really just trying to get these wins completed to try and earn some of these free diamond packs like home run derby sets. Uh, just free packs in general. I'm only at like 65 or in between 65 and 70 wins in this event. And I've been having a lot of fun playing on Hall of Fame. You know, playing in these shorter games with quick counts. Even though they're six innings. Uh, I still think it's alright. I mean, they go by pretty quick. I faced a couple teams here where players were using, you know, bronze players or silver guys. Trying to grind out their seventh inning program as well. In this thing. Trying to complete daily missions. Just... A variety of, of things in this uh, in this video or I guess in this event I would have really liked to work on some more prestige cards uh, some people have asked me you know what's my progress looking like on Mike Trout prestige and he's uh, he's about halfway a little less than halfway complete I still need you know about a hundred and something at bats with them still need about uh, 30 something more extra base hits you know a lot of runs that's pretty pretty much the main thing is runs and RBIs because I'm using him in the leadoff spot his RBIs are a little lower than if he would be in the middle of the order which I might make that change in ranked seasons but in this event we are able to uh, put up a lot of runs especially when the opponent leaves their pitcher in for a really long time and they kind of run out of energy or get into that yellow range I'm just looking to hit the ball play the game a little bit have some fun um, I'm trying to score as many runs as I can tally as many program stars tally up as much xp as possible and really just you know hit the ball practice i know i'm going up against a bronze card or something kevin guzman of the orioles i'm pretty sure this guy had orioles pitchers and uh, white Sox players so he was must have been grinding out either a team affinity some missions something along those lines but we end up scoring 17 runs in this game now we have biggio up and he's going to tack on a couple more there is a mercy rule in this event, and we were able to finish off with, you know, the 10-run lead. We closed that one out in one and four innings, so we were able to save some time that way. Um, in this next one, Biggio's getting us off to an early start, a little hit and run, two and two count with the guy on first base. Scores him from first. I just had a feeling that that guy was going to attack the zone. Anyway, the opponent hit a three-run shot, lefty-lefty, with gold, David Peralta. So we're down a run in this one. Uh, we get a, another double to lead off the inning with Cody Bellinger. We have Mickey Mantle coming up next, the prestige version of Mickey Mantle. And I'm glad that I can use some of these cards that I've grinded out, but I would really like to grind out some other cards that I haven't yet prestiged. Uh, maybe some of the Face of the Franchise Legends or Mike Trout in general. But uh, I'm working on Didi Gregorius, Carlos Correa, a couple players in this one. I'm pretty close to prestige James Paxton. That's who I've been pitching with. In every single one of these event games uh, I only need about 14 more innings with them and I'll have the prestige packs in that will certainly help me as uh, some of my pitchers are a little tired from some of the ranked games I've played recently that I've disconnected I mean I've just uh, been losing connection almost every time in this game we have a pretty good example of you know a two out very late jammed base hit 
extending the inning. And anytime this happens, I expect a lot of runs to be scored or at least a two-out rally to begin. And here we get another just late double the other way. That one's going to get past Mookie Betts out there in right field. I believe that's Mookie Betts. And uh, he runs into the fence out there in right center or I guess right field line. We get a triple there, brings up Larry Walker, and Larry Walker hits a no-doubter. So just like that, we probably should have been out of the inning, or at least uh, the opponent should have been out of the inning. No runs given up. And now we have three runs. Make it four in the top of the third inning. I'm going with the power swing. He left in his pitcher for this entire time once again. And you just can't leave your pitcher in for this long in shortened games. I mean, six-inning games, they don't have as much stamina as they typically would in a nine inning game, at this point, he's got to be in the red, the yellow, maybe even completely out of energy for that energy bar. But we're tallying some RBIs. We're scoring a lot of runs. We're getting the average up for some of these players, I guess, if you really focus on individual attributes or stats in this game, like Diamond Dynasty online stats. Here we smack one with Larry Walker. That card's been absolutely incredible for me. And that's why I probably won't use Bryce Harper in the starting lineup. I'll probably use him off the bench. Reggie Jackson hits two homers in this one on two power swings. And that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully, I got you enough gameplay with Walter Johnson. I would have loved to pitch more than an inning and a third. And then there, of course, is my set 44 headliner prediction. I'm College Lefty, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.